After hiking for hours, it's becoming clear that finding a pink iguana above ground really isn't that easy. But then... Iguana! Iguana! We got a pink iguana. It's a new one. It's big. It is. It's a big male. Oh, my god. It's a huge male. Its pink color is due to a lack of pigmentation. So blood can be seen running in the deeper layers of the skin. It actually is in good shape. There's no much food now in this area, but um, it's doing good. Yeah. Pink iguanas were once found all across the island chain. But over thousands of years, and due in part to competition from another iguana species, Wolf Volcano has become their last stronghold. Working quickly, Gabriel and his team begin to assess the iguana. 71, 71 con 89. So now we're measuring this animal. Measuring size and weight will indicate if it's getting enough food and growing normally. Blood tests will show hormone levels and any signs of disease. The data collected will tell the team if the last remaining pink iguanas are healthy. We collect all these data because they may be informative about the ecology and the evolution of these species because there are so few individuals left. Scientists still don't fully understand why so few pink iguanas survive and whether this tiny population can ever recover. But this research will go a long way towards gaining more knowledge about this precious reptile. Finally, the scientists mark the iguana's body with harmless paint. It will allow them to identify this animal in the future. Are we letting him go now? Yeah, we're letting him go. Gabriel can use the data he's gathered to explore a new plan. We are thinking about a possibility to translocate part of the population somewhere else here in Galapagos. But for this to have success, we need to learn a lot about the ecology of the species. There will be chances for this species to survive, but we have to consider extinction like a natural process as well. But what else would that be? 